everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo, and I have another video for you guys. Today I'm going to be talking about the Batman. We're going to be talking about Ben Affleck stepping down, and I think this, this is going to mean that there's at least three more actors coming, and I'm going to explain what I mean. A lot of people have been speculating whether or not there's going to be uh, you know, the Matt Reeves actor is going to take over in the DCEU and uh, what's going to happen. Who's going to replace Ben Affleck um, in for Matt Reeves' role? Well, this, this causes a conundrum in my head, and I'll explain what I mean right now. So let me just jump right in. First up, I want to address the problems that I see here. So first up with this, um, when Ben Affleck says he's stepping down from the role, he's no longer going to be Batman. And he then uh, proceeds to congratulate... Um, and celebrate the release date for Matt Reeves, the Batman. And this um, for was the first sign that he was admitting he's no longer the Batman. Then he goes on Kimmel and actually outright comes out and says, I'm not Batman. So two things have to happen here. One, um, the DCEU that currently exists faces a, a problem where they have to then recast someone to exist as Batman in the DCEU for ongoing purposes. He can't just disappear. Obviously, it can't be Ben Affleck. He just stepped down. And he's admitted he is not the Batman. Or rather, specifically, he said he is not going to be in the Batman. So we know he's not going to be in Matt Reeves' project. We assume that this means he's no longer in the DCEU. I think we can take him at his word for this one. I think that there's enough evidence there. A confession from the actor himself is a lot to stand on so you can go ahead and safely assume yeah he's not going to be in the dceu as well as not being in the batman but uh this brings a lot to our attention when we start to look at what is the batman the batman is a project written by matt reeves that is going to be taking place in kind of a neuer setting and i'll go ahead and pull up the information for that right now that way you guys can see this as well let's go ahead and take a look at this now so I'm reading here from comicbook.com, as you guys can see right here. Matt Reeves, in a quote, has spoken at length for his intentions about the film. He says this, It's very much a point of view driven, Neuer Batman tale. Reeves explained to The Hollywood Reporter, It's told very squarely on his shoulders, and I hope it's going to be a story that will be thrilling, but also emotional. It's more Batman in his detective mode than we've seen in the films. The comics have a history of that. He was supposed to be the world's greatest detective. And that's not necessarily a part of what the movies have been. I'd love this to be the one where, when we go on that journey of tracking down the criminals and trying to solve a crime, it's going to allow his character to have an arc so that he can go through a transformation. There's a lot of people that have since um, worked with and spoken with Matt Reeves on the project who have then come out online and said things like they've heard from Matt Reeves that the casting is looking to be somewhere in the 20s into basically the early 30s. So in that realm of age, Ben Affleck is 46 years old. And so this actually poses a big problem for Matt Reeves if he's looking to find Batman in some of those more formative years where he's not actually just getting started, but it's shortly after he's just begun his journey. And we know that it's not replicating Batman year one because we see here, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight this for you guys. We see here in this article from The Wrap, we see a quote that says, The Batman, director Matt Reeves says, The film won't be an origin story in the vein of Frank Miller's beloved Year One series, but will rather be a defining and very personal story about The Dark Knight. Year One is one of the many comics that I love. This is a quote from Matt Reeves. We are definitely not doing Year One, Reeves said at a Television Critics Association panel, according to Slash Film. It's just exciting to be focused very specifically on a tale that is defining for him and very personal to him. Reeves was at TCA to promote his new Fox drama, The Passage, and added, obviously we're not doing an original tale or anything like that. We're doing a story that is definitely Batman, though, and trying to tell a story that is emotional and yet is really about him being the world's greatest detective and all the things that, for me, since I was a kid, made me love Batman. It continues on. We are working on our draft in the next couple weeks. Reeves said, right now my head is totally into the script. Right now I'm going to be leaving here to go back to work on the script. So again, this is an older article, but it points out kind of his intentions for the film, showing that he wants it to be something that's going to have character development, something that's going to really uh, prove 
who the Batman is, what he's meant to be, and give him some sort of an arc where it brings him into what we now know as the Batman. A lot of the films we've seen, he's already Batman. He's already got his morals. He's already got um, a, a defined code of conduct and of um, you know his his honor, the way that he fights crime and solves his problems. This kind of Batman story will be a little bit younger, and it's definitely not going to be Batman, uh, Ben Affleck Batman. Otherwise, Matt Reeves would have stuck with Ben Affleck, and it would have been the, the older Batman that we're looking at here. So first off, the problem that we're looking at is namely this. Batman can't be as old as Ben Affleck in Matt Reeves' story. So this has to take place back in time, at least probably 10 or maybe even 20 years in the past. And so we're looking at a Batman that is probably 20 to 30 years of age. He's not a kid. He is an adult. He isn't just starting as Batman, but he's in those early days. So if you want to take an idea like of kind of the age range that you're looking at, it's probably somewhere between Batman Begins and then between The Dark Knight. So in those years between that stage, he's just getting started learning who his enemies are. And that is something that we're going to get to see really nicely. And the rumor here is that there's going to be at least four primary Batman villains in Matt Reeves' script for the Batman. And this is something I'm really excited about as well because Batman is a detective. And if you want to have a real detective story, if there's like a murder or a crime that just got committed, you've got to have multiple suspects. I'm going to circle back. This is all very important for what I'm trying to say here. Ben Affleck is out. The DCEU first off needs their replacement. We know that Matt Reeves' film has to take place in the past. Now, it could be the same Batman that is supposed to be in the DCEU, but his film is detached by time. So it's going to take place 20, 30 years in the past. We're not going to see all the same stuff or the same actors as we will in, uh, say, the DCEU. For example, Superman would have been a baby or perhaps, you know, a child. It wouldn't be the same. Uh, the only person I can think of that would probably be about the same age or same actor would probably be Wonder Woman. But even then, you're probably not going to see her. It's going to be very standalone. And I think that's what Matt Reeves wants is for his films to stand out as their own films. Even though they could be in the DCEU, we're going to see him try to make his mark similar to how Christopher Nolan did and so, uh, similar to how some of the other uh, Batman films have felt very on their own. There was no cinematic universe. I think that's what he's going to try to get at. So Ben Affleck is going to need a replacement that is about the same age as him for the DCEU to continue on the same way that it has been. So even though he steps down and he steps out of the role, the DCEU will need someone to pick up the mantle for the big crossover films. They will plan eventually. It's no longer their priority thanks to Walter Hamada. And I'm actually kind of grateful for that because I, as much as I do want crossovers, I really think that it's very important to just make good films. And if it's going to be a hindrance for you, if it's too difficult, too much for you, you don't, haven't gotten the right team, the right structure to create those awesome collaboration films, I think it's best to focus on standalones for the time being. But they got this train rolling and they intend to continue to pursue those things. They're not getting rid of Ezra Miller. They're not getting rid of Ray Fisher Cyborg. They're not getting rid of Aquaman. You know, they're not going to get rid of all the characters like Wonder Woman. They're not going to re recast all of them just because one actor didn't work out. They're going to push forward. I guarantee it. Now, if we're looking at Ben Affleck stepping down, we're looking at Matt Reeves' film over here, needing a new Batman, needing a new actor who's going to be younger and different than the DCEU replacement for Ben Affleck, who will need to be approximately the same age for this timeline and the continuity to work. They don't want it to look like the Fox's X-Men, right? They don't want the timeline to be all jacked up and every time they make a new film, they've got to retrace their steps and tell a whole new story because it's it's so convoluted and they've made so many mistakes. They don't want that. No fan is going to like that. So they have to have Batman over here in Matt Reeves, young, and they have to have Batman older over here. So that's two actors we're looking at here, but I'm not even done with this. If you're looking at casting for Matt Reeves differently than you're looking at casting for the DCEU, there's another thing that's happening here. Joker 2019 is another possibility. And so we know that the Joker film is supposed to be very isolated, right? It's a biopic. It's not supposed to be a team up film. It's not even supposed to really be him versus the Batman. It's just the Joker. It's telling his story. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to take place in Gotham. That doesn't mean that it's not going to take place with a lot of the same characters, that we might not see Commissioner Gordon, that we might not see some of the characters like the crime bosses and other villains in that in that universe making cameos because he's part of a very rich backstory that cannot be ignored. 
just because you want to make a biopic. So I think that there's a very strong possibility that we'll see Thomas and Martha Wayne. We'll probably see a younger Bruce Wayne at some point making a cameo, maybe even just the Crime Alley Theater. We might see them kind of walk past. You never really get to see them talk or anything. But there is also a strong possibility that Joker and Batman are the same age. There's a very strong possibility that there will be a Bruce Wayne living the glamorous high life of high society in the background or maybe on, on the news or at an event or a gala or something, much to the Joker's disdain. Him not being a wealthy man, him working in a circus and losing pretty much everything he loves personally and then eventually snapping and becoming the Joker. It's very possible that we could see a Batman in the Joker. I don't think it'll be a, a prominent character. He's definitely not even gonna be really part of the plot, but it could happen. Also, another possibility here with the realm of Elseworld stories, so not DCEU Joker. Joaquin Phoenix is not the DCEU Joker. Right now, it currently stands that uh, Jared Leto's Joker is the DCEU Joker, and he's not even out, so he's still in the DCEU. Jared Leto is DCEU. Joker is Elseworlds, and there will be Elseworlds films being made as well. So if you're going to have Matt Reeves have his be in the DCEU, just in the past, that's fine and that can work. But you could, if he really wants to dis disassociate, we might find out that it is actually an Elseworld story. He did mention that it's Nor, right? So it's inspired by Nor style film. He might make his black and white, which would be super cool. I'd really enjoy that and make it really stand out visually. But even if it's not, even if it's just in the spirit of Nor, um, that would still be really good. And he could tell that story in an Elseworlds or even in the same Elseworld as Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And so if that's the case, then you could have still only two Batman, but if he's not in the same Elseworld as the Joker, we might find ourselves with three Batman. So we might end up finding three separate actors to play the Batman. Let me continue. So I'm not done yet. So that's the first three. We also know that we have Gotham, right? So now we're getting into DC TV, not just with the films, but on Gotham, we have that young actor, David Mazuz, if I'm not mistaken, plays the young Bruce Wayne, and uh, that one also has Ben McKenzie as um, Commissioner Gordon, and that's a really, really cool show, and they've already kind of like done like him dressing up in costume and kind of stepping out to almost be a vigilante and just do some recon, but it would be really cool to see him come to fruition, kind of starting to step into that Batman role more, more as the Batman than anything else, more than just a foreshadowing. It would be really cool, but he serves as a Batman, and we have him on DC TV right now. So this is gonna start to get into some spoiler territory, all right? So I'm gonna give you guys a fair warning before I move to my next point, all right? So even though Gotham doesn't really count, um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna talk really briefly about Titans, okay? So if you guys didn't finish Titans and you're looking to finish Titans, you may wanna skip ahead a few minutes. My next point is this. In Titans, again, last call for spoilers, uh, at the end, at the very last episode of season one, in kind of like a, a dream sequence that Trigon puts Dick Grayson under, you see a faceless Batman where you don't really know who the actor is. You can't make out a face. They give you basically no facial details except you see that it's a Batman and he's kicking some serious butt. Like he is crushing. And it was so cool. It was so awesome. They did it right. They didn't even show you who it was. It was amazing. They never showed an actor for Bruce Wayne. They never even showed the skin color of the person under the mask. It's so faded. However, they gave you Batman. And so we know that on Titans, if they pursue that, if they if they want to go that route, and they've done a lot of cameos in Titans, I think that eventually they will show us who they want to be the face of the Batman on Titans. And when they do, that will be yet another Batman in this gigantic DC universe. And I say DC universe because it is also the DC universe streaming service. But nevertheless, Walter Hamada taking over DC has been amazing. And I, I called this a long time ago that... When, when Jovian Wade was first announced to play Cyborg on Doom Patrol, I came out, I made a video, and I said that Walter Hamada allowing a cyborg being played by Ray Fisher in the Justice League and also then moving forward with a new show on the DC streaming service with, uh, with another cyborg, another live-action cyborg, different actors, different universes, means that we're going to start to see characters replicated in the different films, TVs, animated. We're going to get to see them multiple times over because they don't give a rip about if there's one over here and one over there. And we might get to see Deathstroke be in the films and also be on back on Arrow and see um, Deadshot back on Arrow and not boycotted just because Deadshot is being played by Will Smith on Suicide Squad. So we might get to start to see those doubles again 
Whereas the old leadership at Warner Brothers forbade that. That was not something they were willing to do. They felt like it was competing with themselves. They felt like there was going to be a split in market. If you had a character here and a character here, it'd be too confusing for your for your stupid fans. <laughs> like they couldn't understand possibly that there was one here and one there and they're separate. No, we understand and we get it and we appreciate you, Walter Hamada. Thank you. And Walter Mata is the best thing that has happened in DC in a really long time. He put Jeff Johns back in the creative seat and helped get all these awesome stories created, like Aquaman. And so, and also like the upcoming Shazam, which we haven't seen yet, but I'm based on the trailers, I'm very confident that it's going to end up like Aquaman being a smashing success. Very close to the comics, very accurate, very fun. Um, I think that's something that is desperately needed. But nevertheless, all of this to say that with Titans, having their own Batman already, this already happened, um, and it will it will continue to happen. There's gonna be continued um, eluding to more and more taking place. They already kind of alluded to the Joker happening in that finale episode. They've already, you know, there's already been a lot of Batman Easter eggs and references and villains that have come in. But now, whoever's gonna replace Batman in the DCEU will be different from Matt Reeves, that's for certain. And then Matt Reeves' Batman is going to possibly be different from a potential Joker 2019 Batman. So if there is a Bruce Wayne or there is a Batman, he will be different. That will make a third actor playing Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Now, the Titans already have their own Batman. There's two actors playing him. Um, they're stunt guys, and they didn't need to show their faces or do any real acting at all. It was most entirely stunts, which was one thing that made it really, really cool. However, uh, we have another set of actors for that, and then we also have Gotham going on. So we actually technically could possibly be seeing three Batman, but there's a potential for about five, possibly even six. Like if they want to continue down this trail and make more Elseworlds stories uh, like Matt Reeves' Batman or like Joker 2019, there could be others as well that could require this. Say like, for instance, we get another Batman if Flash ends up being the Flashpoint. I don't think it will. I think they're going to backtrack on that. But I think that if... Flash ends up being Flashpoint, we might end up seeing the father of Batman playing the Batman in an Elseworld story, which would be the Flashpoint. So that one would be a DCEU story. That would be very interesting. We'd get another face under a cowl. It wouldn't be Bruce Wayne, but it'd be, you know, his father. So that's that's pretty cool too. So there's a lot of potential here, but I think that with Ben Affleck stepping down, it it no longer means that we're going to be getting one Batman. We are now looking at possibly two, three four or even five Batman coming up in the future, depending on how the TV shows handle themselves, depending on how much they're willing to continue to press forward with more and more Batman stories, which I think is a great idea. People are gonna eat it up. Everybody loves Batman. Everybody wants to see more of Batman. And you know, like if you don't like Ben Affleck, then like, and you'll get a chance to like whoever is gonna play for Matt Reeves. If you don't like that guy, then at least you get a chance to like, you know, Gotham. You get to see a younger Bruce Wayne start to you know get into some adventures. If you don't want a younger Bruce Wayne, then you can go and you can watch Titans, where you can get those cameo Easter eggs where he's a freaking savage, and you don't even need to like get into who is playing the Batman. You can just enjoy the fact that they have a savage Batman on their show, and he's not someone to be trifled with. So that kind of thing is really, really cool. And then it gives you, as a fan, a lot more variety to be able to just enjoy all these different interpretations. That's one of the beautiful things about Batman, that there's always been multiple iterations of Batman. Right now, there's even another iteration I didn't even mention, which is Will Arnett's Batman in the Lego Movie, Lego Movie 2, and the Lego Batman. He seriously is one of the best Batman we've ever gotten. He's so he's so freaking great, so funny, and he serves as like a love note to all Batman fandom ever. It's just so, it's so funny. So even though it's not a serious Batman role, it's one of the most enjoyable if you're a Batman fan because it's literally just speaking your fandom language for Batman. So it's just, it's wonderful. So that's kind of my theory there. And it's it's more or less just interpreting what we're seeing from the news is that the DCEU has just lost an actor. They need that act, They need that actor replaced. Matt Reeves is getting an actor, which is going to be 20 or 30, 20, you know, 10, 10, 20, 30 years younger, probably not 30, but 10 or 20 years younger than uh, Ben Affleck. And that's, that's not compatible. You have to have, 
if it's going to be 20 years younger than Ben Affleck, the DCEU, you can't just drop a 20 year younger actor into that role. No one's going to grab that. It's going to be like, what just happened? You know, like I thought you were older than Ezra Miller's Flash. You know, it's not going to be the same. So you have to cast two or three, depending on how many of these films you want a Batman in. And then what you want to do with Titans and then what you want to do with Gotham and then what you want, you know, so it's just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. So I'm really excited. This is actually really, really good news. Now, you'll start to see I'm going to start doing some fan casting videos for this, for this exact purpose. And I'm going to have to do a duality here. I'm going to at least have to cast two Batman, one younger for Matt Reeves Batman and one older for the DCEU replacement. So that is going to be something we're going to be talking about. I can't wait to get into that with you guys. Also, make sure to let me know who you want to see play the Batman down below. Who do you want to play the younger Batman for Matt Reeves Batman? And who do you want to take over for Ben Affleck in the DCEU as an older Batman so that the timeline can remain the same and not have to screw it up like the Fox X-Men did? Thanks, guys. You guys like, share, subscribe, and make sure to stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.